so today we're going to talking about MySQL, specifically how uh, KubeDB can manage or uh, provision a semi-synchronous MySQL cluster. Uh, so today uh, our presenter is Mehdi Hassan. He's a software engineer at AppScode. He's going to uh, demo how this is working. Uh, this is an upcoming feature for KubeDB. So with that, uh, I'm going to hand over the floor to uh, Mehdi. If you have any question during the presentation, feel free to uh, ask us in the chat, in the Zoom chat. I uh, will answer those at the end of the meeting. So with that, uh, Mehdi, you can uh, start. Uh, okay, thank you, Tomar. So today, today our webinar is about uh, managing semi-synchronous uh, MySQL cluster using KubeDB. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, today, today we'll be discussing about MySQL semi-synchronous replication. Then we'll be create a semi-synchronous cluster using KubeDB and uh, we will see our uh, automatic failover of semi-synchronous cluster in action. So let's move further. Uh, let's talk about uh, MySQL replication. Uh, in MySQL support various, various types of replication. First is uh, the, the asynchronous replication, the semi-synchronous replication and uh, synchronous replication. Uh, for the asynchronous replication, the uh, in in asynchronous replication, source write uh, into the the a transaction write into a source and then then it applies into the bin log and then the source committed it to in its in its you know in its storage engine and the replica re replica sends re request to the source and when the replica is ready, it requests to the source for the replication in a uh, in a fully synchronous replication uh, when a whenever a transaction happened into the master uh, master or the primary uh, uh, or the primary server then uh, then it will wait for all of the replica to commit on 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 each of the server and then it will reply back uh, to the it will response back to the to the client and in a semi-synchronous replication, it falls between uh, between in the asynchronous replication and semi-synchronous replication. Uh, in a semi-synchronous uh, in a semi-synchronous replication, uh, in a semi-synchronous re re replication, you will have at least one replica that will uh, that will sync with the master. So let's move in further. Uh, if we if if now if you look at the image, uh, if a transaction that happens uh, into the semi-synchronous uh, source, uh, it will execute. Uh, it will ex it will first write the transaction on its bin log, and then it will forward it to the replica relay log. When the replica relay then the replica relay log will apply it to in its bin log, and the replica will send an acknowledgement to the source. Upon receiving the acknowledgement, the source will commit its data into its storage engine, and then it will send a response back to the client that your that tran transaction has been completed. So let's move in further. Uh, before before move before going in details into the uh, semi-synchronous replication, I want to mention uh, I want to mention some variables on semi-synchronous replication too. To enable semi-synchronous replication, you you do have to uh, install the semi-synchronous plugin on your um, on your both source source and the replica server. So for uh, in the source uh, in the source server, you have to install the semi uh, semi-synchronous plugin for the source, and in the replica server, you have to install the semi-synchronous replica plugin. So and we have and to enable the uh, semi-synchronous replication on a source uh, on a source server you have to enable the semi-synchronous source variable uh, on and in the replica server you have to enable the replica variable and uh, and uh, there is a variable uh, there is semi-synchronous master timeout and uh, uh, by default the value is 10 seconds the variable the var the variable is responsible for how long the source will wait for uh, the replica to receive an acknowledgement. That is semi-synchronous master timeout. Uh, if a transaction fails to uh, uh, fails to uh, fails to acknowledge within this 
this time out it will go back to the semi uh, go back to asynchronous replication by default the value is 10 seconds for to to enforce the semi synchronous replication we have made it to uh, 24 hours so that the uh, if a transaction take more than 10 seconds or uh, or there is a large transaction it doesn't fall back into the semi uh, asynchronous replication and <clears throat> Uh, in the semi-synchronous replication, uh, you will be able to set the uh, the number of replica you want to receive acknowledge from. The, and that is defined by the variable semi-synchronous master word for slave count. Uh, by default, the value is one. Uh, and the next variable uh, we are going to talking uh, about, that is the semi-synchronous master word point. This is the most crucial uh, variable in the semi-synchronous uh, replication that defines the the term uh, semi-synchronous replication and lossless semi-synchronous replication. Let me describe. Uh, um, the, uh, uh, you can you can set the value of the variable is after sync and after commit. If you set the variable is after sync, what it does is uh, it uh, the source uh, source write data into its bin log and it's apply into the uh, uh, in the replica relay log and the uh, bin log and relay log sync into the disk and wait for then then it wait for the replica acknowledgement uh, upon receiving the acknowledgement from the replica it will commit uh, it will commit into its uh, storage engine and uh, it will send the response back to the client uh, and if you set the variable value is after commit then then what it does it it will uh, it will first write write the transaction on onto its bin log then it will send it to the replica relay log and um, and it will commit a, into the storage engine then it will wait for then it will wait for wait for the replica acknowledgement when it receives the replica acknowledgement it will it will send the response back to the client so if uh, if I had to differentiate between the those two variable after sync and uh, after commit, uh, that is uh, if you uh, uh, if you set the value is after sync, then uh, then uh, if if the source fails, if the source fa fails at the point of when it is waiting, uh, you, you 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 can ensure that your your slave is up to date with the master because the uh, be, because the the transaction hasn't right into the must, uh, master uh, master in, uh, master master uh, data engine or the replica data engine so your uh, so you, so your replica is up to date with your master so if uh, if your master falls at that point you will not lose a data so this will be a lossless semi synchronous replic uh, replication but if you send it to the after commit so at the point of waiting, if it uh, if if there is a scenario like that, uh, it's waiting for the replica acknowledgement, uh, or um, or if there is a uh, if there is a scenario that the replica uh, the transaction in the replica couldn't be processed, so if that if, uh, if in that case the master fails, then uh, you will not. Uh, you, the replica will not be up to date with uh, up to date with the master, so you could have a possible scenario of data loss. So, uh, so in our case, we are setting this variable as after sync, so that we we don't have any data loss. If we want to set up the MySQL semi-synchronous cluster uh, using manually, what we have to do is we have to configure our source. And we have to configure our replica. So, if we want to configure our source, uh, then what we have to do uh, in the source server, we had to uh, uh, we had to install the source semi-synchronous plugin. We have to uh, enable the semi-synchronous source variable, and then uh, we could uh, set our master timeout that how long it will wait for a uh, replica to acknowledge. And then we can we can also define uh, for how many replica we will be waiting for uh, we'll be waiting for the acknowledgement and the 
and the uh, and the weight point for the semi-synchronous replication. And if we want to configure a re replica, that in that case we have to uh, we have to install the replica uh, semi-synchronous replication plug. Uh, replication plugin onto the replica server, and then we have to uh, enable the uh, we have to enable semi-synchronous replica on the replication uh, replication server, and um, the rest is uh, rest is like rest is like the traditional uh, traditional asynchronous replication. That is, we have to set the uh, master for the source, and then we have to start the slave. So. That will be the config, uh, configuring part regarding to semi-synchronous replication. But in case of failover, if the master, uh, if one of the replica fails, what you have to do is you have to restart the replica and reconfigure, uh, reconfigure it um, accordingly. And for the master, uh, for the if if your master has failed, you know, what you have to done is you have to elect a primary in between the replica server and configure. Uh, uh, you have to. Pri you have to configure one one of the server as a source and one of one of them is a as a replica and if you want to uh, reuse the previous failed source or what you have to check is that if there is any iran transaction or not then if there is no iran transaction you can uh, join it back to the back to your semi synchronous cluster if you have iran transaction on it you or what you have to do is remove the iran transaction and Join uh, and join the uh, and join as the replica. So this will be the manual process for uh, configuring source uh, and uh, and replica and uh, failure and in case of handling a failover scenarios. So so now we want to we want to see that what KubeDB is providing us in this aspect. So if you are familiar with KubeDB, we are we maintain a uh, we maintain custom resource uh, resource definition for uh, create uh, provisioning a single a MySQL database. So what you what you will need a Kubernetes cluster and a KubeDB uh, operator installed in the in it, and you will have to apply a simple YAML file to provision that database. And with KubeDB, we'll have that day to uh, day to operations like. Um, uh, like if if you want to do a version upgrade or you you can uh, uh, if you want to do do the horizontal scaling or vertical scaling on on your server or you can if you want to reconfigure reconfigure your uh, server server side configurations or you you can re reconfigure PLS with uh, KubeDB provided ops request. And for the failover section, KubeDB will do a automatic failover uh, for you. So uh, you will not have the headache of maintaining a failover. So I think uh, we are near to the demonstration. So before that, we want to prepare our work environment. So uh, uh, for license, you can visit our Xcode license server and um, for the uh, and for the product provided by Xcode, that is KubeDB stash Cube Vault, uh, you can visit our well-documented site of KubeDB or stash or Cube Vault, and you can always uh, have our our demos and webinars on the YouTube uh, YouTube channel uh, channel. So, and for the installation purpose, uh, you just need to run this sim simple help command. You will be uh, get well documented into our KubeDB website. Uh, in the version section, we have in re next release because we are planning to add this in our uh, next release. So, so we are near to our demo. So let's 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 introduce you to my work station. I have KubeDB installed in my Kubernetes cluster. Here I am watching MySQL object. So, so we want to provision a semi-synchronous cluster. So for that, what we have to do is, since if you are familiar with KubeDB, we are maintaining our custom resources. So here you can see that uh, we are mentioning it as kind MySQL. That is our custom resource object. So in the metadata section, we are naming the database instance. In our case, that is MySQL, and it will be in the demo namespace. 
And for it is spec, we are defining the version replicas topologies uh, and storage and here. So in the version section, we are um, referring to 8.0.27. So the MySQL instance will uh, use the MySQL version 8.0.27, and it will be a, a cluster of three replicas. And in the topology section, we have mentioned it as semi-sim. So that is uh, that means that it will create a cluster of semi-synchronous replication. Uh, if we wanted to uh, some another mode of MySQL that is group replication or InnoDB cluster, we could have uh, mentioned the mentioned group replication as mode there. So in our case today, it will be semi thing. So in the storage type, we are using a du durable uh, durable storage of storage class standard, and we are requesting 10, 10 gigabyte of storage. In the termination policy, we have said it as wipeout. So the termination policy wipeout means that uh, if if we delete the MySQL uh, object, then it will delete the it will delete the uh, resource like pod like pod set full set or PVCs uh, PVCs that are created by uh, by this by this object. So let's apply it. Uh, you can see that our pod has pod has started to coming one by one, and my my database into the uh, is in the provisioning step. Let's wait for a bit. And here I am. Here I am uh, watching the level of the my um, the MySQL instances. So we'll able to see which pod are in primary state or which are working as a replica. Will the level will be updated once the uh, once the once every uh, every instances are joined in the cluster. So let's wait a bit. So now we can see that uh, my MySQL zero instance is labeled as primary and uh, the other are labeled as um, standby and my MySQL server is now into the ready state. So uh, if we exit into the MySQL primary instance, so let's, let's first verify our semi-synchronous replication. So what we can see that our semi-synchronous master status is on here. So the, uh, the this instance is working as a semi-synchronous master. So if we exit into one of the replica, uh, we can see that the replica server is working as a uh, as a slave. So if we now now if we look at the semi-synchronous variable in the master side, we can see that uh, the mm, semi-sync master is enabled on the master server and the timeout is for this is 24 hours. So uh, it will wait at least 24 hours before going back to the asynchronous replication.
and uh, you can see that it will wait for one, uh, one slave for acknowledgement and the wait point will be after sync and in the replica server Uh, in the replica server, we can see that the the replication slave is enabled. So if we insert some data on it, so I have created a database name. So we can see that the database hello exists in there. So uh, if we take it in the replica server, we can see that the replica uh, in the replica, it has been reflected. So the server is working properly. So now, uh, as I mentioned, if I, uh, uh, for the semi-synchronous replication, the master will uh, wait for at least, um, at least one replica for acknowledgement. So if I do a failover from the MySQL this to this to replica server it will wait for uh, it will wait for this to server to be to be rejoined in the cluster so uh, let's see this in action so so i want to delete this to uh, replica now now if i want to write a transaction into the master now it will be in block stage. So, so we can see that now it's in the blocking stage. So now we have to wait for these two server to up again and and rejoin in the cluster. If uh, if we had uh, at least one server available, we could have completed the this transaction. Uh, let's wait a bit to the server will be up and running again soon. Can you show us the log for this uh, other parts, like MySQL one or MySQL two, to see what's uh, happening there? Okay. Uh, we can. Uh, I can show you the uh, coordinator logs. What's what's going to what's going there? So, the coordinator is using Raft. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I think the it's trying with the MySQL second server. Uh, we are using Raft uh, to. Uh, we are using using Raft for the uh, leader election or uh, or to get some sort of lock in between the server. So we can see that our MySQL second server is configured as replica, and uh, it will it just completed the transaction so so and our all of the server has joined into the cluster since our database into the 
is in the register register so so we can uh, we can see that the the transaction we are uh, we have been created it, it was weighted and when the server can bake uh, come back then it's reflected on to, on the replica so in speaking of raft we are using uh, we are using raft as a um, as a distrib di distributed consensus algorithm uh, that will help us to uh, elect the uh, that will make sure us to elect the primary uh, single primary in a, a given circumstance in case of a network failover or um, or the primary primary failover so uh, if we are now if our in case of our primary server fail, um, one of one of the uh, uh, the one of the replica between MySQL one and MySQL two will be our master. So uh, let's try this. So now I'm going to delete the prim primary port. So. So we can now see that our MySQL second server is working as a primary. We can validate that. So we can see that in the MySQL second, uh, MySQL two server, we have uh, same synchronous master enabled, and it has currently one client that is the MySQL one, yeah, if if the failed replica joined into the cluster, it will be uh, it will be it will be two. So let's exit into our another replica. Uh, if we if we see the slave status of the uh, another replica that is MySQL one, we can see that if master host is MySQL uh, it MySQL two, <laughs> and if now we can insert some data into our current master that is. So. We can see the reflected change. So our failed uh, failed source has been come into the online, and our failed source has also come into online. Okay. I think uh, this was all from my side today. Uh, if you have any question about this, uh, you can ask. Uh, feel free to ask your question. We will love to uh, answer your question. Uh, so thank you, Mary, uh, for the demo. Uh, so yes, I got some questions actually. So let's. Uh, uh, if you can go back to the maybe the um, I, the uh, the terminal, uh, we can uh, walk through some of the items here. So. Uh, uh, one of the things uh, that I wanted to understand, like uh, all these, uh, the failover when that happened, when uh, you deleted two pods, uh, it took uh, almost like two minutes, 30 seconds for uh, one of the, the pod two to join back into the cluster. So uh, why, uh, like, why uh, does it take so long? Uh, is it kind of the, typical time it takes to join back into a cluster uh, or... uh, okay I, I i i got your question uh, here is uh, uh, two more uh, i i want to address two things there uh, first one is the uptime of the pod and that is uh, 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 for a mysql class 
to be, it takes some time to uh, up the MySQL server. That is when, uh, and another one is uh, we are uh, we're taking some sort of log using RAF. So um, uh, unless uh, it's, it's having the log, it cannot process the uh, lo logical in, uh, in logical things in term of rejoining. So uh, in my case, there was uh, some, I think there was some uh, issues with the raft, raft that is uh, it was unable to acquire some sort of lock. So that's why it takes some time. I think the, uh, I think uh, the usable time will be lesser than that. Okay. Um, yeah, are we using RAP for leader election or taking locks? What are we uh, doing? With okay. Uh, we are using uh, raft uh, in both uh, in both cases uh, we are using it for leader election uh, because we don't want uh, we don't want unless, uh, we don't want any sleep, split brain scenarios like uh, in case of a network failure uh, we don't want um, we, we, we don't want multiple primaries uh, writing each other uh, because one of the thing that is uh, making event replication that is if some uh, uh, if if someone writes into the replica server uh, and in our case uh, you can write into the replica server we have stopped uh, stop it by setting the read only so if you uh, if i can show you So you can see that our read only is on into the replica server. So you can try it on the, on those server. So, so in case of, uh, if you, if you try to write on to the uh, secondary servers uh, by mistake, yeah, you won't be able to write on it. And another thing is that for our implementation purpose, we had to acquire log. So um, there, there, there doesn't, there doesn't create any risk condition while, uh, while, while executing the logic be, uh, behind joining into the cluster or configuring it itself as a replica or a primary. Uh, so with the uh, when the errand transaction thing happens. Uh, how are we recovering that node? Are we taking like uh, a full backup, uh, doing a clone from the current primary or how are we recovering it? Uh, uh, if, if there is an event transaction, uh, what we are doing currently is that uh, we are taking that is there is a, any event transaction onto the, uh, in the server that has failed. So before joining into the cluster, it should, uh, it should go through a check that if there is any event replication on it. So if the, if there is an event uh, event replication, we are planning to uh, clone. We are planning to remove it by uh, cloning from the current master. So if we uh, if we if we clone from the current master, so the replica is uh, the failed replica that is will be joining will be cloning from the current master. So it will be up to date. Uh, with the master, so you will not have to deal with the. Uh, uh, since um, there is no data loss, and uh, since there is no no data loss, so you don't have to deal with data loss, and you don't deal, you don't have to deal with the event replication if you clone the uh, if you clone and rejoin into the cluster. Okay, uh, so this is uh, planned, right? This is not done yet. Uh, we are we are working on this. So currently, uh, currently we have gone for to the checking of the event transaction. Uh, we have to uh, uh, as, you know, we are planning to uh, do this. Uh, we are planning to release with the clone method. Okay. And when we are doing, uh, when we do that clone thing, I think we need to do the same thing that we did with the 
uh, read-only replica, making sure that if the you know the bin logs are gone or things like that, the clone should still work, right? Uh, in the read replica, we uh, we have already implemented the cloning me mechanism. So okay. uh, if you have a long, uh, if you have a you have if you have an old database um, that has a, a lot of data, like a terabyte of data in it. So you, uh, the if you then apply a read replica, it will uh, it will clone from the server. So for that okay. you 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 need to install the clone clone server. So for a QDB managed database, uh, it, uh, you will be able to, uh, QDB will be able to do that, uh, do that thing because of that, if you, you are giving the read permission, uh, read permission to the read replica using the uh, double verification that is called double opt in there. Right, right. I'm just saying that, okay, so clone mechanism was how we copy over the whole data, right? So we, do, we are not doing bin long, uh, if it is a, a uh, you know, a uh, small amount of data difference. Then we did a bin long bin log sync, correct? And no. read replica. Yeah. So is the similar thing possible with the errant replication or no? If there is errant replication, then we always have to do a full clone, or is there is a way to do a bin log sync or something like that to fix it? Uh, uh, I had gone through uh, several MySQL semi-synchronous cluster. Uh, implementation uh, different others of op operator one of them what what they are doing is uh, like they had a uh, so if there is a event replication they are uh, they are separating it from the cluster then the user should decide uh, do you want to clone or uh, or you want to remove the event transaction manually so uh, if there are a small amount of event transaction that you uh, you can find the difference using the uh, in a ZTID based replication. You can find the difference between uh, the the primary server and the source server uh, by using the ZTID compare. So you, you could have uh, you could have that transaction that are uh, that are errant. So if you remove those, uh, I think uh, you will be able to uh, join join in the cluster using um, by removing those transactions so okay uh, are we also doing gtid based uh, synchronization here yes we are doing gtid based synchronization here okay so i guess uh, then we should also consider that basically if there is an error transaction and uh, only few of those then which is the typical case because we typically keep bin logs for three days. So usually you will be able to just uh, effectively remove the error transactions and then bring it back into the cluster and get everything synced. If that's not the case, then we have to do a full clone and then uh, get get the basically a complete buildup of that node because uh, the sync, uh, the clone operation puts the load on the primary server, right? So we don't want to do that unless absolutely necessary. Uh, okay. Yes, typically, yeah, we don't want to do clone unless absolutely necessary. Okay, uh, I think there will be one other comment about the uh, MySQL uh, YAML spec. I think we have made a bunch of uh, assumptions or maybe choices for the users like uh, doing that after sync versus after commit. And then like, uh, 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 and then like uh, the, 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 the thing that about like the, you know, the timeout for failing over from uh, semi-synchronous to sync async, like 24 hours, things like that. So mm -hmm. those things should be exposed as a variable in the semi-sync config, like we have for group replication. Yeah. And then those things should be defaulted to the values that we prefer, okay. but that should give users a choice to make a different, uh, you know, selection in case that's what they want. But uh, uh, yeah, yes, uh, I got I got your point. Uh, I I've been working on this. Uh, uh, there is a there is a spec called semi synchronous spec. Uh, in this section, uh, you will be able to. Uh, you will be able to set the value of the semi-synchronous variable that will um, that will uh, with that the semi-synchronous cluster will be configured. So uh, in the upcoming release, uh, it will be with that 
uh, with that modification in the YAML files. So you will be able to set the values of um, these variables. Okay. Okay, I guess uh, that's, uh, thanks for all the answering all the questions. Uh, I, uh, do, do anybody, anyone else have any uh, other question? Okay, um, I don't think uh, there are any other questions uh, at the moment. So with that, uh, this will conclude our uh, today's webinar. Uh, so our next webinar will be in, uh, hopefully in uh, maybe in, uh, in two weeks. So we're going to be talking about, uh, you know, how we are improving the KubeDB operator upgrade uh, experience for our users today when we, you know, release a new version of KubeDB operator, it requires a quite a few manual change or, uh, you know, kind of uh, follow-up work to update the various Docker images and versions and et cetera for the already running databases. So we have been working on a kind of a, you know, supervisor process or which will basically automatically generate recommendation like, you know, okay, this database needs this kind of change, maybe that needs that change and things like that. And effectively it will automate all the database management process that is required to do after the operator upgrade. Um, and, and it will uh, do those automatically for the user. So that's, a, a, you know, that's something uh, we're excited to show uh, next time. Uh, and with that, uh, we'll end our webinar today. Thank you everyone for joining.